In the past decades, long-haul flying has mostly been undertaken by larger, wide-body aircraft. For clarity, a wide-body is defined as having more than one aisle in the main cabin. The introduction of the 747 in 1970 really changed the possibilities and standards of flying. But you may not know that narrow-body aircraft have flown long haul since a while. In this video we will have a look into the history of narrow bodies flying long haul. Also we will discuss about the narrow-body aircraft capable of flying long haul. And at last, we will conclude the video with the answer to the question, is long haul on a narrow body the future? So first let's know the history of narrow bodies flying long haul. Longer flights with narrow body aircraft, however, are nothing new. If we go back to the early days of the jet age, the Boeing 707 was the first truly successful jet aircraft and was a narrow body. The most sold passenger 707 variant, the 707-320B, offered a standard range of up to 9,300 kilometers. The 707 was a common sight on transatlantic flights back in the days. With the development of the 747 and later widebodies, these early days of long narrow body flight were largely forgotten. But it has never completely gone away. Many narrow body aircraft have been capable of decent ranges, like the 737NG, the 757, and the A320 CEOs. The Boeing 757. One of the first modern narrow bodies to start being used extensively for long haul flights was the Boeing 757. This first flew in 1983 and has been very popular with US airlines for medium and long haul domestic and regional flights. Once ETOPS rules extended twin engine operations later in the decade, it started to see use on longer routes, including transatlantic. While the rise of narrow body routes in the past was due largely to the 757. Today there are three new aircraft pushing the possibilities of narrow bodies, the Boeing 737 MAX, the Airbus A220, and above all, the A321XLR, which is expected to be a game changer. The 737 MAX. Even though, the MAX had faced a lot of problems in 2019 and 2020, we can hope that things get better in 2021. As of October 2020, there have been 387 aircraft delivered, and there are 4,102 orders outstanding. The MAX has already operated on long-haul routes before its groundings. Norwegian Air operated some of the longest 737 MAX routes, including Belfast, Dublin, Edinburgh, and Shannon to New York. These are all over 5,000 kilometers. And Aerolíneas Argentinas operated the 737 MAX between Buenos Aires and Punta Cana, a route of almost 6,000 kilometers. The Airbus A220, with a range of just over 6,200 kilometers. The A220 comes just short of the 737 MAX. But with a lower capacity and incredible efficiency, it opens up more markets and routes to long-haul narrow bodies. U.S. Airlines uses it mainly on regional routes, although Delta has operated it between Atlanta and Seattle. And Air Baltic has operated it on several longer routes, including, between Riga and Abu Dhabi, which is 4,370 kilometers. Airbus has also announced a boost to the maximum takeoff weight of the A220-100, potentially increasing the range further. An extended range version could easily fly between London and New York, or further. The Airbus A321XLR. The biggest game changer in long haul widebody flying is likely to be the Airbus A321XLR. This new aircraft is currently expected to enter service by 2023, with production expected to begin in June 2021. The A321XLR seems very promising. It has a range of 8,700 kilometers, and it offers a 30% lower fuel burn per seat compared with previous generation A320s. The plane can seat between 175 to 244 passengers, depending on the configuration. This aircraft has received a lot of orders from airlines around the globe, the largest order is from Indigo Airlines, it has placed an order for 300 A320neo aircraft. This will include the A321XLR, but it is not confirmed how many yet. Airlines like Qantas, Vietjet, Wizz Air, American Airlines, United Airlines have also placed sizable orders. The A321XLR can connect Europe with South Asia, the Middle East with South Africa, and a lot more destinations. Now let's see how the long-haul narrow-body operations might take place. 
Using the narrow bodies between high demand routes like London Heathrow and Dubai won't make much sense, because airlines can make more profit if they use aircraft like the 787, the 777, the A350, and the A330, which is a higher capacity than the A321XLR. Well, that will be the case after the aviation industry has fully recovered from the impact that COVID-19 has caused. While recovering from this impact, airlines are likely to see lower demand on many routes. If the demand is lower, it will make even more sense to operate lower-cost narrow bodies on routes that can take them. So that is when airlines might be able to use the A321XLR to make profit the most. So, let's answer the main question. Is long haul on a narrow body the future? Well, long haul on a narrow body is very much possible and is also very profitable. After the launch of the Boeing 737 MAX, the A220 and most importantly the Airbus A321XLR. Now all kinds of unexplored markets can be achieved, all thanks to these aircraft. So, that was it for this video, if you have watched it till the end and liked it, please make sure to subscribe and also share this video with all your friends interested in aviation. Well then, see you all in the next one, until then, goodbye.